Oh my god, am I really this white? Oh my god, okay, well... It always takes me a minute whenever the camera's rolling. Cause sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I've got a couple nights. Are you guys making fun of me? When you were young and your heart was an open book You used to say Alright, so I just arrived at the Philadelphia airport. I'm gonna get myself checked in, get through security, and uh, proceed further with this trip. I'm so excited. Okay, so here is the game plan for the day. So Emma is driving down to Kentucky to meet up with Marikan and her husband Jared. And then they're gonna be driving down to Nashville and pick up myself and Jenna at the airport there. And then once we get there, we'll get our rental car and we're actually gonna be staying in Franklin, Tennessee overnight before we make the drive down to New Orleans tomorrow morning. So. I literally have two hours to kill before I have to board my flight, so um, I don't know. I can't contain the excitement. Hey guys, it's Marikin. I'm with my husband, Jared. We are picking up uh, my mom's car. We're borrowing her SUV for the week-ish. Um, we're actually just taking it to pick everybody up at the airport and get a bigger rental car. We're going to get a van. Um, that way we have plenty of room for everybody. It still is gonna be a little bit cramped once we get everything in here, but it'll be good enough to get everybody at least in the car and get to the rental car. So Emma texted me and she's about 20 minutes out, which is great timing because my mom lives about 10 minutes from me. So uh, we'll probably get to my house about the same time. I am super excited to be reunited with everybody. Dylan just got on the plane and Jenna will be getting on a plane shortly. So. I'm super excited to see everybody and I just, I can't wait. You guys are definitely in for a treat this year. I feel like I should have like blood pressure meds or something because the flight, whoo, oh my goodness. But I thought that was my biggest problem. Well, well, well. Hello, hello. well. Look who is here, Miss Miss Spins and Needles herself. Yes. Jenna is in the house, and um, so we got a text from the others. They said that they hit a little bit of traffic and weather, so they're not getting here until about like a half hour from now. But um, as you can see, the party's now beginning. Let's go. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, we should go to the Johnny Cash Museum. Really now? <laughs> Nashville sucked. But let me tell you, the fucking 
shit show it was getting the Enterprise rental car. We literally flew in and arrived around four o'clock. We did not leave until like six or 6.30. Traffic, fucked. The airport, fucked. Most stressful day of my entire life. But I did get to meet up with my best friends, which is exciting. Wait a Real? second. Is that actually them? Is that yeah. them? They found their way? <laughs> all the way here. So as you can see, the gang is all here. Say hi, guys. Hi. We're, hi, guys. Hi, guys. We're just getting our rental car situated, and then we'll proceed further with the evening. How, how, how's the ride, Jared? He's all right. Huh? A lot of buttons. There's a lot of buttons. A lot of, I don't, I don't like buttons. A lot of tchotchkes. A lot of tchotchkes. <laughs> tchotchkes. All right, we just arrived at our Airbnb. Let's check out the digs for the evening. There's, there's even the outdoor deck area here. Yeah, check this out. Oh, with the lights and everything. Here, get the full effects. Guys, they have board games here. What? Monopoly. Wait, what? I want to. Th this can get ugly. <laughs> There's problematic trouble. Whack a mole. Yo! <laughs> This is where it all started. Jared, what? no. This is the washer and dryer that I want at the house. I know it is. We can't afford it. Oh! <laughs> you know you're an adult and you like, yeah, so go over appliances. Oh! Oh, damn. This what? is this is where the this is where the moment happens. <laughs> is this where we all like open the doors and go, ha! Ah, and slam? <laughs> Ring, do you want the two beds? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need it for our marriage. <laughs> like the Listen, to each their own. <laughs> it works. <laughs> so this is McDonald's with a twist. What's the twist on this in terms of what we'll be drinking with our meals? It was bourbon. Bourbon. <laughs> hence, the, hence the twist. <laughs> it's the most normal <laughs> For us, definitely. Yeah. The vast majority of people. <laughs> Here we go. And we're going full round table, coffee table in the uh, in the living room. This is how we're doing it. There's like a peanut butter one, which is like a crunchy peanut butter cup. The regular with the peanuts. And then there is one with pecans. That's basically the regular, but with pecans instead of peanuts. Damn. The pecan one is my favorite. I like like a milk, so. Mm -hmm. I have gas and I can't get rid of it. Like, I've been trying to burp all night. I can't eat, can't do nothing until I burp or something. <sighs> At least Mama Marican had some Tums on her, so we're hoping for the best. If not, I've got three, four people that can perfectly burp me. I'll be fine. Ding, 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 ding. That's Queen song. Yeah. Vanilla Ice went ding, 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 ding. He has that extra yeah. note in there. Yeah, but it's a it's, it's total ripoff. Oh, sure, it's sure. But you someone could note. go as far. You add one note. <laughs> it's still a ripoff. shits and giggles, should I say, here at the Airbnb. And also we got, oh, holy crap, every gulp of this is fucking potent, let me tell you that right now. I don't even know what's going on.
Good morning, everybody. Hi. How's everyone doing this morning? This fine Monday morning. <laughs> wait, <dude. laughs> Jen is like, she's wait, like, what? Like, <laughs> I'm in bed. I'm, I'm out. Doing all right, Marie? Doing good. Doing, doing good. good. All right, so we just checked out of our Airbnb in Franklin, and now we have about a seven and a half to eight hour trek to New Orleans. But first, <laughs> we're going to start off with some Waffle House, which is a youngest member staple for right. every trip, basically. That's so. Right. Stock up on some protein. A bottle of red. A bottle of white. It all depends upon your appetite. Waffle House. Yes. I'll meet you anytime you want at our local Waffle House. Enjoy <laughs> well, that was fun. That was a blast. Seriously. I literally were old friends. Old friends, like, comrades. Everyone was so nice. I'm so happy. All right, so now we're leaving Waffle House, and now we have just a little seven hour drive to to Nola. Nola. No, Nolans as Nola. the locals call it. No, they, yes. <laughs> Nobody calls it that. Nobody calls it that. <laughs> this seven hour car ride is gonna be a trip, let me tell you. Holy Fuel stations cow. they are. Bruh, this place is huge. Alright, we're we're being real tourists today because we are going to Lucy. A bookies. <laughs> Let's bussies. <laughs> See what Bucky's is all about. Oh my gosh. Did somebody say? Did somebody say? Yeah. I, I, I feel like I gotta bring home some souvenirs from this place. Guys, what is that? What is that? It's a a splash toy? Yeah, we saw him at the airport. He had no oh, luggage, no luggage, just a walking stick. And I was like, oh, that's nice. This it's my grits. Grits. <laughs> Mama tried. You gotta say it just like that. Let's do this. Let's do this. Do I need a walking cane? You're just talking about it. I feel like a mouse. I feel like I need something from Alabama. Yeah. Baseball. What about the baseball shirt? There you go. <laughs> Bucky's, 10 out of 10. If you live near Bucky's, I'm jealous because that shit was pretty cool. It was like a Walmart, never knew. I got a neck pillow, I got a lighter, pretty cool stuff. I live in New Jersey, and we have the privilege of just telling an attendant, fill it up regular cash. But since we are out in the South, I guess I have to pay my dues now. So you guys are in for a record spinner exclusive. Okay, let me close this door. I'm gonna get out. Okay. Oh, so it's photo line. So it's tap. So hold on. Insert tap card. All right, I'm gonna insert. Wait, whoa. Card inserted. Processing. One moment. Please. Please remove. Wait. Car wash? Wait, are we doing the car wash? No. no. Wait. Don't touch it. I don't. Alright, I don't want to join. No. I just want to get my guest. Lift handle. Okay. Push button. Are we doing. You ain't paying for the hash either, now, wait, wait, what the hell is this? Wait, do I? Okay, okay. Wait, do I just keep it like this? And then, there you go. There's a now, trick there that you're missing. Wait, wait a, a sec. Trick. Oh, 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 oh. 
wait, how do I? How does it go. stay? Go. <laughs> wait. Wait a sec, how do it'll I know when it's done? It'll, it'll, is it gonna do overflow? It. It's gonna catch fire? It'll pop. It'll okay. Pop. Hopefully. It'll all pop, most of the but, but now I'm gonna reenact the move set. So let's say if we fill it up and let's say it's 47.53, let's just say. I'm gonna walk over. I'm gonna run it up for him. Just run out to a smooth 48. It's beautiful. God's gift. How much does this hold? Oh, oh. I don't have no idea. We're about to find out. We also have to is it? Okay. Just let it, let yeah, it I it. hope it doesn't like shoot out and just go all over the place. <laughs> That's why it caught so many fires in Oregon. It'll click. If not, I will grab it quicker than like. Yeah, so whatever you do, Jenna, do there, not. Oh! It clicked! Okay, so, alright. Now I am going to take this out. Let it, watch the drip. You don't want to ruin the paint. <laughs> Here. Tap, 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 yeah, you're gonna tap, tap like you would Wait, when you like this. No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've just stayed in my car all this time for this stuff. Do, do you want a receipt? Yes. Sure. No, there's something you forget it. Receipt. What? There's, there's a door that's open. I, I, I'm fully aware of that. <laughs> but you gotta like tap. Yeah. So when you no, when you take the, the this out of the the, the fuel gauge. Yeah. Right? Then you take it. Oh. Oh. oh my god, you should have that. <laughs> I did it! Um, but today we drove all day and that was exhausting. I'm just worn out, I think, mentally. Physically, I'm fine. When we got to New Orleans, it was hell finding the Airbnb because it was covered up by a big fucking tree. Like, what the fuck? All right, so we just got to our Airbnb and let's just say we are living large. Check this place out. <gasps> oh. oh. Wow. The freaking art piece! Look at that. I'm wow. obsessed. Another room. It's a widow bedroom. Oh, a widow bedroom. <laughs> it's a widow bedroom with some cake shorts. This is this this is where the records will go. Oh yeah. They'll be Most bunking. They'll be bunking. This is insane. And I think he said that the top level is just a mirror image of this. Really? Yeah. Oh. oh. like I honestly would I would ask like how much is the mortgage how much is rent or whatever because this place is absolutely fucking tremendous let me tell you right now so a little bit of an impromptu adventure uh, Marikan has an itch to get a tattoo and Jenna's gonna join along and get a piercing for herself so let's see how this turns out
So tattoos and piercings have been had. Now we're heading to the Voodoo Lounge for dinner and drinks. Let's go. All right, raise them up. Here we go. The, the debris loaded fries. So it's just like a roast beef. Smells Davoon. The voodoo juice, if you ever come to New Orleans, get the voodoo juice, get the whatever dirty fries or whatever good stuff. And as for the voodoo juice we had, it is shocking how only just a couple of sips, just like that, a couple snaps worth, gets you off your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Let it be known this was after one drink, guys. One drink. Um, and then I've had to play mom and babysitter because everyone's drunk off their ass and I'm just exhausted, so. I still know what's going on. I really don't. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. Are we ready for, for gators? Yeah. Ready for gators? The, uh, ready for gators? I'm ready. <laughs> Gator repellent spray. <laughs> All right, everyone. So we are off to get breakfast at Cafe Du Monde. Yay! Get some beignets and also, I could use some coffee. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I mean, one cup brought me back to life, but I'm gonna need another, but let's eat. <laughs> sound sacrilege but they literally like reminded me of almost like a better version of Olive Garden Zeppelis. I know that's sacrilege and I might be canceled for that but they were so fucking good. <sighs> Now we're moving on to our next adventure of the day, and that is the Cajun Encounters Swamp Tour. Let's see what it's all about. The whiskey tree. The whiskey tree. Cajun Encounters. My name's Emmett. I'm gonna be your boat traveling tour guide today. Emmett, our tour guide, was amazing. Had a great time. It's a relatively small animal. It's only about four feet, but it can still put its head over these rails. Yes. These rails are here to keep y'all in. They're not here to keep any of these animals out. Oh my god, it's a little pinch of I always longed for those moments where our tour guide would take the boat at like fucking 30 miles an hour because that's when I felt the damn breeze. So what did we think? Oh, we it was awesome. That, that, that was, was absolutely awesome. awesome. Oh, my 
we, we went very fast. I wish Steve Irwin were with us. No, I know. I am. Oh, so sorry. Crikey. So sorry. Crikey. If you look over there, there's Jared and Marie Wild. <laughs> But no, seriously, that was absolutely awesome. Learned a little bit more about what goes on in the swamplands and got to see some gators and raccoons. How cute were those raccoons? Me and Dylan are gonna take them home. Listen, there was two. Three. And we, and there was three. Yeah, there was three. So uh, me and Jared will take two. Okay. We'll take one. Then? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Honestly, look, this trip confirms, as well as the other adventures that we've had in other trips, that Jenna is definitely the bravest one out of all of us. <laughs> Good stuff. I was a bug kid. Off to Luke for lunch. Double L, L squared, Luke for lunch. Lunch for Luke. All right, so before we hit up our first major record store for the day, or actually I should say for just today, because then tomorrow we got more ahead having some drinks at the Hard Rock, so cheers, cheers. everyone. Yeah, this, cheers. Was, this was a move. Yeah. I feel like making, making moves. <laughs> making moves. Uh, so what are you bring the little quarters? We got a little bit of bottom field. We got four shirts. All right, we got the stones. We got Clapton. Winker. <laughs> we got, we got so many Whoa, stuff. crawling king snake lyrics? There you go. <laughs> we got some more stuff in Oh, sorry. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, Jenna. Jenna. Come check this out. Whoa. Little Richard. Oh, I don't want to see. Oh, I don't want to do that. Whoa. Emma, look at this. It, it kind of does. This does smell like, this does smell like, this does, this smells like Bourbon Street in restaurant form. I'm not going to go. Got the king. The fab. The, the fab. I'm on stage. Oh. So if you remember from our St. Louis documentary, one of the record stores that we went to was Euclid Records. And it turns out there is a location here in New Orleans. And we figured, and just to kind of add some parallels between all the trips that we've done, revisiting shops that we've been to, going to two of the same one, we're gonna check out this one. Let's go. Agreed. 
What'd you find? Look at all these You didn't boys. want dancing in the street? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? It's two ninety nine. Come on. So what was the verdict on Euclid Nola? Really good. Really solid? Yeah. Spent too much money. Uh, <laughs> too much money. Honestly, I, I I hope that the bar that I set no, bar, or, I hope that it goes lower from here. Dylan <laughs> spent the most. Did I? He spent the he, most. Be, he beat them. Yep, he spent the most. What were we gonna say? No, I was just gonna say, and this isn't even our designated record store day. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> That's tomorrow. Nope. So I have the sleeve back home. I don't have the cardboard, so now I have the cardboard uh, of, of Alice Cooper's Muscle of Love. Hell yeah. And then, <laughs> you study for I have no <laughs> cash four. But I, need, I need one more. I need five, and I'm done. So that's good. Because a man comes around, hurt. Yeah, I'm in love, hurt. I hurt myself today. Uh, <laughs> Desperado, <laughs> I'm so long so I could cry. Personal Jesus, which is interesting for John. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited about that. Uh, picked up a couple records. The first record that I picked up is the uh, reissue of Material Issues, third album, and then the last one before um, Jim Ellison. But Freak City Soundtrack, great album, fantastic Chicago power pop band, um, international pop overthrow their debuts, my favorite. Uh, but this, this third one is very good as well. I don't have the second one yet, um, but the second one I don't think is as good as the first and third one. So um, Rick Nielsen appears on this album, so obviously Cheap Trick Connection. Uh, another great Chicago kind of power pop connection, Chip. Um, uh, oh my god, why did I just lose his name? Uh, is Enough from, uh, yeah, from Enough's Enough uh, also appears on here. So uh, grab this. Also picked up to kind of fill out my Groundhogs catalog is, I guess this is a new reissue, I didn't know that Fire Records was putting this out, but it came out this year, of the Groundhogs Cross Set Saw. Uh, this is 1976, and of course we just lost uh, Tony McPhee uh, last month, so I'm kind of sad about it, but added this, this to collection. So finally have that. Uh, limited edition silver bone. That's cool. Yeah. Cool. And then the last record that I picked up, uh, even though I already have it, it is John Mayall's The Turning Point. This is a live album from 69, recorded at the Fillmore East. This is like a turning, the, literally the turning point of John Mayall's career. But the reason why I picked it up, it was only seven bucks. And if you see there, and there's a squiggle on it. Now, I don't know if they knew or they don't care. I don't know. Um, but I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that this is an authentic mail. One, I don't think that people would really fake it, and two, I have a few John Mayall signed things that he signed went right in front of me, and uh, it looks pretty legit. So, couldn't pass that up. And he's cool. almost dead. They're dead or they're almost dead. <laughs> <sighs> it's true. <laughs> uh, but yeah, really cool. Um, so I did go over my one to two limit, but I stayed within the $150. So I rationalized everything by stuff I needed. Um, I did find some queen and these were all queen singles I didn't have. So body language, a kind of magic, and it's a hard life all in the picture sleeves. Uh, I rounded out my Ian Hunter collection with overnight angels. And I also rounded out my Mod the Hoople collection with spring capers. I am continuously rounding out my Mamas and the Papas and their solo career collection. So I don't have anything from Denny Doherty's solo collection. So this is like my first from his solo career. Uh, this is what you're going to do. It is also a misprint. So I couldn't pass that up because you don't really find a lot of their solo career stuff very often. And I'm also rounding out my Joni Mitchell collection with Shine. Uh, this was the first time it was pressed on vinyl and I've been meaning to pick this up. And it's craft recording, so it's going to sound absolutely fantastic. Brady Grumman mastered it, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so first, not surprised, but I folded and I got another dead live album. Had to do it. This is more of an early live album. 
Then I did Trout Mask Replica <laughs> because I hit myself and I don't have this one yet. I do have some Captain Beefheart, but this is by far the craziest that I've yet to pick up, so had to do it. Um, I got Elvis Costello, Mighty Like a Rose. I love Elvis Costello, and this is one that I've been looking for for a very long time. And the reason is because a lot of the songs on here are songs that like Paul uh, McCartney and Elvis Costello did a lot of demos together for, and I fell in love with them, and that's actually how I was introduced to Elvis Costello, so it's like full circle. Um, then I didn't need this, but Emma threw this in my face. This she Rolling Stone, it. Paul McCartney, and then she Linda's on there. She's adorable. I'll frame <laughs> it and put it in my apartment. And then this I thought would be like my New Orleans like souvenir. It's this old New Year's Eve um, advertisement at uh, Tipitina's, which is a live music joint here in New Orleans. Um, and the Wild Chapachulas played, which they are like the Mardi Gras Indians, if you've ever seen them at Mardi Gras. Um, and then the Neville Brothers, which was actually the meters when they broke up and then um, formed then again, but under the Neville brothers. And then I don't know who the Tipitoons band is, but I'm sure they're good because they played with the other two. It's very cool. So that's my little souvenir. So I know that earlier in the documentary, we did a little pre-gaming at Walmart, but I was the only one that left with anything vinyl wise. And I said that if we were to stop at a Walmart during this trip, I would get my hands on this. I came close to getting it prior, but didn't quite pull the trigger on it. It is the new Walmart exclusive of Queen's Hot Space. Um, I think I've said it before on my channel, Walmart's doing all these exclusive Queen pressings. Some of the colors are similar to what's included in the studio albums box set, but there's a couple that are like specific and unique. And this is one of those, because I think the box is on blue vinyl, and this one's obviously on yellow, so they're two different ones, and I don't have to take my copy out of the box to play it, all that. So, got that at Walmart, but what did I get at Euclid? So, I saw this on the wall. I know exactly what entails with this, and the shop uh, owner, I, I don't know if he's the owner or whoever was mainly working, he knew what entailed with it as well. This is David Bowie, live at the BBC Radio Theatre in London, June 27th, 2000. This is only available in the Brilliant Adventure box set. Um, and I have some, I've kind of been on a hunt to get a lot of these box set only titles, uh, cause this was not given a, an official standalone release by itself of the other studio records. But, um, this was released on CD in a limited run back in like the 2000s. Excuse you. Edited version, excuse you. <laughs> in an edited format, but this is the full undoctored show standalone from the box. It was up on the wall and I was like, definitely, definitely. And then... I finally decided to get this. I've been holding off because I've been wanting the unofficial version. I'll explain it. This is the Beatles Christmas album. So the Beatles fan club back in the 60s would do seven inches of, of like cr Christmas greetings for the fans. And um, they did a box set um, several years ago, a seven inch box on colored vinyl with the replica sleeves. I have been waiting for it to get a repress and I have not seen it. And there are a lot of unofficials out there with this original artwork as it came out because this is the album version that came out for the fan club, but um, it does go for a bit of money. And I don't recall if this red cover variant was ever put out officially. I know the, the ones that I've seen in person are blue, but I saw this, but also this is kind of fitting because you have the red jacket and what? the green vinyl. And it comes on the red Apple label, which if you have a copy of Let It Be, an original, double head, go ahead and double check that. So I finally got my hands on this. And then I also picked up this piece. Uh, my good friend Patrick, who works at the record store that I work at, has played this before. This is Odyssey, setting forth one of the most valuable and obscure as hell psychedelic American rock albums. Um, OGs and older copies go for big, big money. And when I saw this, like it kind of just registered that I had heard this prior and I really dug it upon first listen. So it was kind of an impulse, like sight on scene. But also, these guys look cool as hell. Like the cover was worth it just alone. Like you can get a sense of what entails with this upon looking at it. And then I had a moment of weakness as you probably <laughs> saw. So I rated the David Bowie 7 section. Now, as you see, these are the 40th anniversary picture discs. Um, Parlophone had been putting these out for record store days ever since 2009. Some of them go for big money. They're made in limited quantities. I never personally jumped on them because 
I'm not much of a picture disc guy, but my rules are kind of changing. So when I saw a bunch of these there, I just got them in one go. And um, the co-worker that was working, not the co-worker, the guy that was working at the shop was generous enough to charge me $12.99 for each of these since some of them varied in price. But I got Space Oddity, Changes, Fame, Golden Years, TVC15, and Sound and Vision. Ghost Tour? Ghost Tour. Ghost Tour. Food? 87. Beer. Booze? Three fifty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are off to our dinner stop for the night, which is the Crescent City Brew House. There is a six beer option I uh, flight. I'm not ready. So now, time to get spoopy. We're going on a ghost tour. Never mind. <laughs> Wait, what were you gonna say? Tequila. Apparently you can hear screams from the far distance. See, I really wanted to go into like all of these like haunted like mansions and estates and places just so I can just so I can witness, you know, the spirit that lingers around. That would have been very cool. We are going to room 208. <laughs> or not. Or not. Us in our mind. And he liked a cool room. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. You guys are standing where the boys are standing. <laughs> that's at the edge of the bed. This it is. is bed. Oh, that's Tommy's leg. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. No shoes. store her name was royale if you're ever in new orleans and you want a good go good ghost tour royale she's fantastic the blood Three bags the blood amazing. bags oh at God. the vampire <laughs> 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 um no it was fun it was yeah. a lot of fun all right so now we are rounding things off with a trip to the blacksmith bar emma is not ready for this <laughs> i'm just excited listen i'm a nerd if you guys know me i'm a nerd for so many reasons but i teach history and I love history, and obviously New Orleans, there's so much history here, and uh, it's just gonna be a lot of fun. I mean, Hell why yeah. not? Hell yeah. Having a drink at one of the oldest bars, or they, they claim, right, the oldest bar. That's right, that's running on old electricity. That's right. There's no AC. Oh, is that this one? Yeah, uh, right here, up there. Here it is. Lafitte's are here. Yeah. So, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Hell yeah. Oh my God. 
ducks are in. So let me tell you a story. One day, we walked into a bar, the next time, we took a tequila shot, and it goes like this. Ooh, oh. Oldest bar in America. Oh, shit. Because I have way too much tequila. There's a lot of things that happen that I don't remember. Let me tell you a story. All right, here's a story. Cafe Du Monde, Dylan Pagan, all right. I can't miss it. and New Orleans. All right. And are you hearing all this? And I know this is gonna get cut, but I. But I just want to say, my eyes are going 50 different directions. <laughs> going on. Good morning all. Morning. How's everyone doing today? Um, pretty good. Everyone sleeping? Pretty awake. I, I woke up and it was daylight. <laughs> it was nice. Shut your eyes. All yeah. of a sudden. Boom. Bam. But anyways, for anyone that's been waiting to see more record stores, get this. We are going to be hitting up how many record stores? Like three or four five. record stores? What? 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 Wait, what? I think it's five, right? Oh, I thought it was four. I think it's four or five. We're going to be hitting up four or five record stores all in one day today. Five. It's five. Five. <laughs> I hope I don't repeat yesterday. But anyways, we're I hope hitting... You do. <laughs> We're hitting up five record stores in one day, all conveniently located around like the same distance of each other and like the same street. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to get some breakfast at Toast. Okay. They better have Toast. 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 Cheers. Store one of five, and that is uh, no Pulp Records. No Pulp Records. This was a highly recommended place, and um, let's see what further damage we're bound to do. So now we are on Magazine Street, and the crazy thing is there are four record stores on this street. And we also got recommended a record store while we were in No Pulp. So, so there's, a, we there's another a possible, option. another fifth, possibly. But the next one that we're we are going to go to is Nola Mix Records. Yeah. Let's see how Magazine Street holds up.
so now we are at Peaches Records. And I gotta say, judging by the looks of this place, it is bound to drain our wallet. It looks really cool. Yeah, let's go. Listen to me, okay. look, I'm gonna say this. Peaches, the best selection I ever saw. Tell me why, and look, I work at a record store, I know what things go for on distributors. Why are they charging like $10 over? I'm gonna give you an example. Record stores exposed, check this out. <laughs> Melanie Martinez, Portals, brand new release. I can get it for roughly like 18 to 20 bucks distro price. Retails for 28 to 30 bucks. Tell me why that fucker was 40, why? Well, after that experience, we went to Miss May's and we're having some shandies, vodka and Red Bull, as this always. Is right now. And watch this. Uh, ooh. Mama's having a beer. And what's, what's Papa having? Jack and Coke. Hell yeah, baby. What a documentary, right? Yeah. It's so, uh, too. so as you see, Mother Nature is not on our side, but it's raining, so that's why I'm filming this clip here in the car, but we are gonna be stopping at the White Roach, and we're gonna make a run for it. We might look different than what we look like now, so just, if you're wondering why, this is why. So now we are off to our, is it our last shop of the day, roughly? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Called Sisters of Sis Christ. Sisters but, of Christ. But we say it like, one, two, three. Sisters, Sisters of Christ! Christ! Now this is a more like metal, punk, rocky kind of store, so should be interesting. Let's check it out.
I will say, as great as a tourist city New Orleans is, the record stores, some of them had potential, and then some just kind of just weren't completely in my wheelhouse, sort of, which, granted, I said early on I was going to stick to the whole, you know, one, one store, not one store, one record per store kind of minimum, and then whatever the rest would be would be it. So at No Pope, No Pope? Nope, no, 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 pope. no, 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 pope. no, 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 I got, um, Johnny Cash's Live at Folsom Prison. I do have, like, the original, but this one is the double LP with the entire show on it, and it has all of my favorite songs, which honestly didn't make it onto the original, so, had to do this, I've been wanting this for a while. Dylan put it in my hands, and now it's in my home, so, <laughs> um, now he's getting voted off the island. <laughs> The only other store that I got something at was Sisters in Christ. Sisters in Christ. Um, and I got it there also due to Dylan. I was only doing Christ work. Yeah, you were doing <laughs> Christ. Oh, whoops. But we've got the doors. We've got their debut album here. This is the Vinyl Me Please version of it. Comes with the little 45 single, the artwork, you know, the whole kit and caboodle. Beautiful vinyl. And then black water, fully light, which yes. makes sense, honestly, at Christ, Sisters in Christ. Sisters in Christ. Um, you describe it shoegaze, it's heavy psych. Doom gaze. Doom it's like gaze. doom metal shoegaze, but that album is their psychiest. And then, I mean, all the ladies. He played it for like maybe not even five seconds, and I said put it in my hands. Hell so yeah. Now it's in my heart. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I got a rock. Is that what you got today? Really? Is it? Wow. I, I was good. I also didn't see anything. But. Damn, Emma Nothing. had self control. Nothing that stood out. I don't know what to say. Euclid's still my number one. Yeah. <laughs> I also got a t shirt. <laughs> same one. But you got more. Yeah. Boys. And while we were at Peaches, I found this for American. People I love. Yep, yeah, because that's just that's American. <laughs> Let's see. Kind of going back to uh, No Pulp. Alice Cooper, Killer. Yes. The uh, 180 gram, I think. It doesn't say when it was reissued. Uh, was, that was 2012, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, it does go back some time, but it sounds amazing. And then at. No Limix. No Limix Records. The indie exclusive Metallica. Cool. Uh, we were somewhere else and they had it, and I thought, nah, how about we wait and see if it comes up somewhere else? There it's you go. It's $2 cheaper than Euclid. I'm shocked that you, like, do you have a copy of that already? And it was used at Euclid. Yeah, the Walmart exclusive. Yeah, the Walmart exclusive. Cool. And then Billy Joel at, um, Sisters, yeah. Sisters in Christ. <laughs> Sisters in Christ. Is that how speak? No. <laughs> anyway, Billy Joel. All right. Billy Joel out of it. Um. So, are we surprised that I did the most damage? No. Not really. I, did, I, I feel like I did more than my one per store at some stores, but I stayed under budget, all okay. except for one store. Okay. But in reality, I didn't spend a lot at others, so I had some extra funds. So. Uh, at No Pulp, I actually didn't get a record, but I did get Arlo Parks' uh, Collapse in Sunbeams, her debut album on CD. I have the vinyl, and nothing really stuck out to me, but when I saw the CD, I was like, I gotta take that home with me. And the lady was also nice enough to give us these tote bags for free. That's cool. Then uh, at Nola Mix, I also got a shirt. This one I guess has their logo on it, and it's purple, which is my favorite color, so... I uh, also got Strange Ways, Here We Come by The Smiths, my last uh, record I need for my Smiths collection. And this was what made me go over budget in one store. Uh, this is the Mobile Fidelity of Billy Joel's Piano Man. I love this album. I have uh, an original and then the Walmart reissue, but I feel like this one is going to sound the best for obvious reasons. Of course. Uh, and I couldn't help myself. <laughs> And he also gave us a tote bag with a little logo on it there. Cool. And then at Peaches, I actually I picked up a shirt there and they folded it where you can't see the logo and see how cute it is. 
How cute. That actually is a cool design. Yeah. And the records were kind of pricey, so... I went on my tangent. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you've probably seen that, but <laughs> I did uh, pick up the, the greatest <laughs> TV hits. Um, and the only reason I picked this up is because it was, like, pretty close to... It was priced price. fairly to yeah, what it, it goes was, for. It was, it was priced pretty fair. Um, I don't really know what this originally went on record store day because I couldn't find a copy myself. Maybe just slightly under that. But, um, yeah, I literally picked up, like, four other records that I would have loved to have, but they were all at least $10, $15 over normal asking price. That's the only record I did pick up. But I also, guys, look how cute. It's Ooh, a Freddie Mercury cool. air freshener. That's cool. And I also got a Freddie Mercury sticker and then an Olivia Rodrigo sticker because they were cute. And again, they were reasonably priced too. So Cool. Um, then we went to the White Roach. The White Roach. And I got a sticker there. This was kind of like an impulse buy. This is nice. the Who sell out. I saw it on CD as I was checking out. And this is one of the most recommended uh, albums from The Who. It's my that personal I get. favorite so, you Who know, record. Had to go it's with good. that. Uh, this is something that Dylan sampled in the store and is very singer songwriter, along the lines of like Courtney Barnett, mm -hmm. all that kind of jazz. Uh, she's a local artist, kid. Charla Roy. Charla Roy. Um, that's how. Is, uh, I guess that's, that's how that's it's how pronounced. Dylan's going with it. And I don't even know. I guess this is self-titled. Um, yeah. On colored vinyl. And I just thought it would be kind of cool to dig into, especially, you know, we need somebody from New Orleans. Yeah, keep it local. You know? uh, and then in Sisters in Christ, this is kind of where I went overboard in terms of how many I bought, but still stayed under budget. So I've got a couple of Mariah Carey records. Both of them are newer reissues, but they were used. Oh, so, that's cool. So um, I got them for a steal, and why not? Bless. So you got the Mariah Carey collection. Uh, one of the only Zeppelin albums I'm missing now. I'm only missing Physical Graffiti, which I oh. know is like. Oh. I know. Oh. I know. Oh. I know. I know. <laughs> but every time I find a reissue, it's ridiculously priced. And I really want a good used copy because all of my records are used. So Got I'm it. holding out to find a good used copy someday. Uh, also found a used copy of Eric Clapton's. I saw Unplugged. that, yeah. And honestly, it was a really good price 25 bucks. It's got one quarter bend here. But I don't play the the jacket, so yeah. yeah. There you go. This one was a really cool find. The Ooh, Half Speed wow. Master. That's cool. uh, Bruce Springsteen here, Born to Run. This is one of my favorite Bruce Springsteen records, and I actually picked up a Half Speed Master of one of Billy Joel albums, Fifty Second Street, last year. So I guess I'm continuing there you go. that trend. And I uh, almost cried when I saw this one. Director's Cut by Kate Bush beefing up that Kate Bush collection. And uh, they also gave us really cool tote bags. That's really Sisters cool. Christ. Join the puns. Sisters in Christ. <laughs> All right, so starting with No Pulp, um, you're gonna notice there's some intense twinning action with my selection of records that I got today along with what everyone else got. So, Johnny Cash at Folsom Prison. I have been wanting to get this record ever since we went to Nashville two years ago. And um, it just finally happened. And this is the same 2LP complete show uh, pressing. Um, Jared had showed me this initially and then I showed it to Jenna and then he was like, oh, there's another one. And I'm just like, it was meant to be. So I got my hands on that at No Pulp. I kind of went with like a loose sort of one record per store kind of rule, kind of. It's, it's just how it turned out. Uh, and then we went to Nola Mix, um, kind of beefing up the Talking Heads uh, collection. This album is called More Songs About Buildings and Food. Um, I just needed this album, so it's in the collection. Finally, the one that we won't discuss. I said what I had to say about Peaches. But the two things I got um, were priced accordingly to what they go for, truly. Um, and coincidental because I got that huge lot of David Bowie seven inch picture discs um, over at Euclid. Um, they had these two, which are some of the more recent ones that have come out over the recent years. Um, as a matter of fact, I think these might be like one of the last couple of ones that they've done in the series. Boys Keep Swinging, as well as the Breaking Glass Live EP. So got my hands on these two. 
And then same with when we went to the White Roach, um, some twinning action with Marika and I picked up uh, Kid Charleroi. I honestly just saw the cover and I thought that it was just kind of intriguing. Um, interesting singer songwriter type stuff uh but the arrangements are very beautifully executed i say it's just a it's a very well made album just based off of what i've heard uh but also the color vinyl is really cool i do want to show it off it comes on like this sort of metallic marbled gold colored vinyl it looks really really sick so and also it's it's local it was in the local section i figured get some some new some new orleans uh type stuff now we get to um, Sisters of Christ. And I gotta say the selection was solid, but when I saw this, I was immediately excited. And it is the soundtrack to Unsolved Mysteries. Um, I already have volumes one and two of what they've put out in the past, but this is an entirely different release. And I was kind of worried because I thought that this would be like a combination of the two, but this is something completely different. It's a three LP set. It's a triple gatefold jacket. And let me just show you the vinyl. I know this is going to be a little time consuming, but the folks watching are going to really appreciate this. Record one, some nice sort of black and blue split with white splatter action. But don't worry, it gets even better. Check this out. Some purple and black with white splatter. I didn't even know that it was on this color vinyl too, just, just so you know. Because I, I had a feeling that it was gonna be black because there is a black press out there, but it was sealed. Keep that word in mind, sealed. Black and green with white. I paid 40 bucks. This goes for 140 on Discogs. So whether this has been sitting around at the shop for a while or as part of my friend, somebody fucked up, one big time in the end. Preservation Hall, which is a little little piece of jazz history. They call it like the Jazz Holy Land. I really liked it. I'm not a big jazz person, so that worked out great. So quick fun fact, at Preservation Hall, myself, Marika and Emma picked up this album at the gift shop. So we had quite, quite an adventure last night, I will say. We had an interesting night. A lot of the random things happened that I guess as closer as the uh, weekend gets, the crazier tourist attractions. That final tequila shot, it was a moment. If you can't tell, Dylan is wasted. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and we intended on going to Bourbon Street and just kind of bar hopping, which didn't happen. And so we had a plan to meet at Fritzel's. I go in Fritzel's, no one is there. And so I'm like, well, maybe we met at the Tropical Isle. Maybe they decided to go there first because that was also one of our stops and they were right next door. So I thought, well, maybe they're in there. So I go to like peek my head in to see if they're sitting down in there because it's just one round bar. And the guy, uh, the bouncer literally like puts his arm across my chest and whistles at me and is like, you need to give me your ID. And I uh, literally looked at him and said, I think I do not need to give you my ID because I was looking for my friends. I don't think they're in there, so thank you. And I like stormed off in a mad dash and then Jared and I were trying to wait for them because they hadn't gotten there, they got turned around. So we were waiting for them and a couple guys tried to, you know, 
get us to buy beads and whatnot and we were just trying to move and keep away from all that and while we were waiting for them they actually ended up facetiming us saying that our car somehow had turned on and so they were trying to stay by the car so we met up at the car and it was just this big ordeal and they all decided to go home I feel like I'm a late bloomer because I'm 25 years old and yet I still make the mistake sometimes of mixing liquor and um, basically not being logistical. So needless to say, sleeping in and taking a shower and not smelling like swamp ass really did the difference. All right, you guys are stuck with me for the morning because Dylan and Emma are feeling a little down from last night's craziness. So jenna and jared and myself we're all here at tabasco this is my hopefully favorite part of the trip this is the one i've been most excited about we're gonna tour the factory probably have a quick little bite at the restaurant and also go to the gift shop so stick with me for a few minutes So now that the gang is all here, we are going to be checking out the Louisiana Music Factory, which is a record store that was located just right across from the tattoo parlor we were at on Monday. So let's see what that's all about. Woohoo! Yeah. High on the need radar. I'm gonna guess very much that if I had to say needed it or not, I would say 100%. Emma, are you walking out of here empty handed again? I have two records of making that. So, to put a little bow on our traveling adventures this week, steamboat. we are going on a steamboat tour, a whole dinner cruise type deal. Check this out. Oh shit. You gotta get Dylan. 
bananas for to be shoot up to the stairs. <laughs> Emma, how do you feel? <laughs> Cooper schools out. Yes. Very excited about this. And Miles Davis, tie the blue. Hell yeah. Uh, we got a really cool Kate Bush poster that is in this nice cardboard thingy. And I'm not going to open it until I get home. Um, <laughs> so you've seen it already. In the <laughs> Bite my ass, okay? Um, <laughs> I also got. <laughs> Bite my ass. <laughs> Bite my ass. <laughs> I also got this two CD. It's called Essential New Orleans Jazz. Uh, it's got like 50 tracks on it. Um, just jazz from around the area. So really excited about that. They had a really big sale bin. And I got uh, Lady Gaga, Dawn of Chromatica. I believe this is the clear vinyl variant. Cool. Um, but it was on sale for $22.99. This bad. is like the remix of the Chromatica album which isn't necessarily my favorite, but I did eventually want to add it to my collection. So since I could get like $10 off, why not? Uh, also in the sale bin was Sweetheart of the Sun by the Bangles. And this is on a purple with pink streaks vinyl, limited to 900 That's copies. Cool. Um, yeah, just again, trying to round out that Bangles collection. This was one that I was kind of back and forth on for a little bit, uh, Beggar's Banquet by the Rolling Stones. I did need this in my collection. It was a little bit pricey, but I think it's worth it because it's the limited edition um, gray, blue, white, and black swirl. It's got a poster um, with the original uh, gatefold art, so it's, really it's a, cool. It's a gorgeous looking pressing. Yeah, couldn't pass that up, honestly. And then because last night uh, we went to Preservation Hall and we picked up the record that they had there, I also picked this one up. I didn't realize it was a record store day release, really. Um, I didn't even know this thing existed until we were at the record store, but it's got uh, some really fun songs on here. There's like five songs on it, so honestly, I don't think you can go wrong. And the last thing, this has made my entire trip, you guys. Queen, Another One Bites the Dust. There it is. 
It's beautiful. I almost missed this. <laughs> so I'm so glad I have it. So Louisiana Music Factory was a great little shop to kind of wrap up the New Orleans record store stops for this trip. Um, I took advantage of the sale bin. Not gonna lie, I could have slaughtered that section with what stuff was in there, but I decided to be a little conservative when it comes to how much I bought. Rounding off the early Velvet Underground collection, this is White Light, White Heat. This is the Abbey Road Half Speed Cut, and um, got this on sale for $19.99. Um, I've seen this on wholesale sites go for much more than that, so I was very happy to get it for such a solid low price. And then I also picked up Iggy Pop New Values. Uh, this is a record that, thank you. <laughs> this is a record that Emma had actually told me from last year when we, when we went to St. Louis. She, she asked if I had this and I said no. And she's like, we're gonna fix that. And that fixing time has come now. <laughs> and it comes on nice like marbled blue vinyl. It, it looks really solid. You have to check it out for yourself. I got a Grateful Dead album. The one with the PP -pee with the sperm <laughs> eggs. <laughs> So as you see, we are all fully packed. We are bidding farewell to New Orleans. Wave our goodbyes to Bourbon Street for one last time, but party ain't over. Because oh. now we are hightailing back to where we first met up two years ago in Nashville, Tennessee. So it all ensues. So we just arrived in Nashville. Let's check out our Airbnb for the night. That was the quickest we've entered. Serious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're getting better every day. Wow. Well, oh. Oh, dang. <laughs> this is nice. Got a little island action here in the kitchen. Yes, and I don't know. Is that okay? It's probably one of those fancy houses where one of these is it's disguised as a trash can. Yeah, it's like a speakeasy. Yeah, it's okay. We don't throw away trash. Found one! Found! That really threw me off. Wait, what? That head is really soft. Wow. Oh, no way. Oh, this is cool. Is that part of the property? Uh, <laughs> is it a garage? Is it? It's hard to say. This is cool. Is the garden? I don't, I don't know this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Huh? Is that part of the Airbnb? I have no idea. So now that we are in Nashville, we're actually going to be revisiting some older ground from oh. our trip from two years ago. Oh. And that is Grimey's. Figure we'll do a little pre-dinner record shopping because, I mean, why not? let's face it, that's never a bad thing. So let's see what we get.
Marie, can you you just got one, right? Totally. That's a that's a for one LP. That's, that's thick packaging that. there. <laughs> So as a staple with all our trips, we always end up going to Taco Bell, but the Taco Bell Cantina in Nashville offers booze. So we're having boozy Taco Bell. Well, we went to Grimes and I picked up uh, Jason Isbell's Southeastern and the brand new Culture Wall Little Songs. Cool. Oh, and we spent so much money that they gave us a free t-shirt and we got the Grimy, the Grimy's logo with the Metallica font. That's cool. I went a little overboard. Not really though. Um, <laughs> this is my favorite store in Nashville and there were a lot of things that I normally don't see as you'll kind of find out. So uh, the Arctic Monkeys, this is who the fuck are the Arctic Monkeys. Um, I kind of got into them with their newest album last year, The Car. I was just kind of over the fan base for the longest time. I had a bad experience and I just didn't really want to get into the music. But once I listened to The Car and started digging into their catalog, I found out I really, really like their music. So now I am trying to build up my collection. And this isn't a record you just don't see. So I had to pick that one up. Uh, one of my favorites is Favorite Worst Nightmare. This is again one I don't see often at all, so I had to pick it up. And uh, the album, AM, is the whole reason I was not a fan of the Arctic Monkeys because everyone had this shoved so far up their ass. Um, it just turned me off to the band, even though I did like a couple of the hit songs off of it. Um, so even though this isn't my favorite, I don't see it as often either. So I thought I would just pick it up because it usually goes quick. And uh, then we have Super Sad Generation by Arlo Parks on the white vinyl. I like her debut and her most recent album is really good as well. I've not heard anything about this, so this will be something fun to dig into. I almost thought that I missed out on um, The Feeling of Falling Upwards live at Royal Albert Hall by Five Seconds of Summer. Um, they released an album last year and this is a bunch of live stuff from that album. And it's also just some of their early stuff on here too. It's a really great show and I was excited that I found that. This was kind of a like impulse buy. I saw Mellow Matt's my local record store post getting this in on New Music Friday. It's the Jazz Dispensary Top Shelf series, and this is Jack De DeJanti. I'm gonna probably butcher that. Uh, sorcery, and it is a psych jazz powerhouse, uh, according to the hype sticker. And this is its first worldwide release since 1974. It looked really interesting, and New Orleans has gotten me really into jazz, so why not? Uh, John Mulaney, the sack, the sack lunch bunch. I always get that tongue tied. This is one of his Netflix specials, and it's the only comedy show that he has um, on vinyl that I don't have. Uh, it's more of his kid friendly one, but it's really good, and all of his shows are fantastic. And finally, the first thing that I picked up, the one thing I'm the most excited about, is Yola Walk Through Fire. This is her debut album. Uh, I love her second album. That was what kind of got me started on her music. And then I've been looking for this album ever since. And I finally have it. All right. Uh, picked up Dr. John the Night Tripper Gree Gree. Uh, I was looking for this in New Orleans, obviously the New Orleans Connection, the NOLA Connection. And the I think I only came across it in the Louisiana Music Factory. And the price was just a little off for me there. Um, so I was excited to find it here for a really decent price. This was the um, original 1968 mono mix, sourced from the Master Tapes, Master by Kevin Gray. Oh, yeah. um, so you know it's going to be good. Limited edition colored vinyl. I just real quickly looked it up to see what color it was. I think it's either green or red. So okay. we'll see. Cool. Um, you'll see the reveal on my channel, A Vinyl Little Plug. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's vinyl. So, yeah, so obviously with the New Orleans trip and that connection, I wanted this in the collection. And obviously it was hyped up by Jenna. Um, so I'm excited to have this. Also hyped up by Jenna, and I've also seen this uh, kind of thrown around in the VC a couple of times. I also saw it uh, on John's channel, or not his channel, but his Instagram, Digital Gramophone. He showed this. Um, this is Simondi. I said it right. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I don't really know a lot about it, but real quickly, it says, An unforgettable mix of Afro, reggae, jazz, and funk, Simondi's debut album captured the black experience in the 70s London and inspired a generation of hip-hop producers across the 
pond. Um, so this is also pressed on translucent orange vinyl, so you'll also see that eight vinyl wall. Um, <laughs> and now yeah, I'm just really excited. I sampled some of this, hyped up by Jenna, hyped up by John. I know it's gonna be good. So those are my pickups. Sweet, all right, so. <laughs> First, we've got a recommendation by Dylan that he has been getting us to listen to a bit yes. um, of Montreal. This is Satanic Panic in the Attic. Such which a good album. I'm all down for. Love the album cover. And it's Beatles, you said? Beatles meets monkeys meets kinks with a slight electronic twist. So I'm all excited for this. Had to do oh, it. Cool. And then um, someone finally gave up a nice colored copy of Gizzard. And Such I don't have any Gizzard record. in my collection. So, so good. I'm excited so to get my psych on it's with this new gem. Yeah. Oh, is it? <gasps> Show that sucker Ooh. off. Ooh. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Yeah. So what did I get at Grimey's? Um, I was so thrilled when I saw this in the Big Star section. This is Chris Bell, I Am The Cosmos. Of course, Chris Bell was in Big Star and then he left, did his own solo stuff. And uh, this collection of his solo recordings, I believe came out around early 90s there was a single that came out in 78 but the rest of it came out then and it's very much just in that same sort of power pop vein as big star and i know for a fact that this is on back order slash out of print on all the distros so i was kind of shocked to see this out and i've been really wanting to get this for my collection because the songs on here are absolutely fantastic and next up brought a little piece of home uh to this trip uh, with Bruce Springsteen's greetings from Asbury Park. Um, for being a New Jersey native, I'm still warming up to Springsteen's catalog. My father's a big fan as well as my godmother. And this is one that I really wanted to check out because I have such an affinity with Asbury Park in Jersey. So it was kind of uh, necessary for me to kind of get it for just that connection, but also <laughs> I have to get it. <laughs> Sorry. Comment down below who you think that was. I literally cannot believe you 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 don't listen to Springsteen. And I'm from Jersey. Dylan. I'm sorry. C D. D. And it was black. I just. Is it okay? Look, Jenna's getting all the good. I don't know when to stop. And cut. All right, it's our last morning, afternoon together. It's very blue. You can tell on everyone's face it's very blue, but- It's literally blue, it's raining. It's, yeah, that is true. It's very glum, but we, we're kicking today. We're ending our last day on a big high because we are gonna have breakfast at the donut distillery. Get this, donuts and mimosas. Or coffee. Or, or coffee. Whiskey. Or beer. Wait, wait whoa. Or a Red Bull for, <laughs> or a Red Bull for Jenna. But needless to say, this is a nice little pregame before we go to our last record stop for the day, and uh, I'm I'm pumped for this one. <laughs> donuts even breakfast, you guys. Donuts are not breakfast. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> Mimosas, first off, were delicious. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> Second off, woo! So before we go to our last record store for the day, we're gonna kill some time at Urban Outfitters. Ow. Maybe we'll find something. We're going. So we have made it at our last record shop for this trip and in Nashville. And that is the first shop that we all ever went to together. And that is Third Man Records. Now, if you're a longtime viewer of my channel, you know how much Jack White means to me and how much I love Third Man. He is the reason why I got into record collecting. And despite the fact that I've been at this place twice from our first trip, 
I still get very starstruck when I see the building and literally stepping inside, it's like a Willy Wonka factory for music. <laughs> so this is gonna be the best way to cap this off. goes. Isn't this a great way to end things? It was a way. Was it a way? It was Wait, whoa, way. that bag is so cool. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. Is, this a, is this the documentary 2.0? 2.0. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. So we went to Urban Outfitters. I wanted to see if they had anything on sale. They didn't. Um, but this is a new live Sublime album. And I've not listened to it yet, but I really enjoy them. And this is the Orange and Fuchsia exclusive. So. I copped that. And then, third man, this was completely up to Dylan. Dylan picked my bag for me, okay? <laughs> so, he kept saying Olivia Jean. That is the one you need. This is Raving Ghost, her newest album. Mm -hmm. This is the one you need, is what he said. So, I picked that up. Review on trackmanual.com. And also, we got the Silver Synthetics debut. I'm assuming this is self titled. Yes. Um, we listened to it in the car on the way back from New Orleans. And they're actually from New Orleans. And I was like, okay, you know what, fine. I need to do it to tie in the trip. And then this one I asked Dylan about. It is the Exploding Hearts Guitar Romantics. He said he didn't know much about it, but Emma came in clutch. And she said that Jim had sent it to her in a VCLT. And this is the limited edition colored vinyl for the 20th anniversary of the album. I'm really excited about it. Cool. I picked up Silver Synthetic. I jumped Hell on yeah. the bandwagon. Hell yeah. So cool ties plus 
obviously recommended by Dylan, fans of television, T-Rex, Velvet Underground, and more. That's right. I'm so unique. <laughs> I'm so unique. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us. So Dylan really, went ham. <laughs> so before we went to Third Man, we did stop at Urban Outfitters, and um, Marie and I got me this Maya Hawk album called Blush. Uh, so it, it's awesome an Urban Outfitters exclusive on Translucent Light Blue Vinyl. And then I also picked up the newest album from Margo Price. It's called Strays. Uh, Margo was actually on Third Man for her first couple of albums. And this is another Urban exclusive limited to 500. Um, I don't know how accurate that number is because there were a lot of copies yeah. there. But it's on Sky Blue Vinyl. As for Third Man Records, well, first off, I spent so much money, they gave me a free tote bag, <laughs> which was so damn cool. Um, they also do this cool thing uh, where if you're a Vault member and you show your membership, they will give you access to um, like a box of like just older releases and things. So I showed that off and I kind of combed through what they had. And as I kept saying, have it, have it, have it, have it, came across some things I did not have. So I got this Disgraceland soundtrack. This features The Kills, The Dead Weather, and William Tyler. I had this at one point and I sold it, but now that I've been kind of warming up to William Tyler's um, acoustic work, I also love The Dead Weather, and Alison Mossart is in The Kills, kind of had to have it again. And there was also this Johnny Cash live release, uh, which I also had at one point, and then I ended up selling it. Now I'm kind of buying it back just because I bought it third man. Of course, as you saw and heard, I went in the record booth, did a little record your own voice action, and what else did I get? Oh, so real quick, I did get this for my niece Topanga. I got her a little third man onesie with the logo there. <laughs> I had a moment, and I don't know what I actually did, but I bought a record. Yeah, you know what? Let's zoom in on that. See the lit? See the logo? Yeah. It. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know how like that'd be unnecessary. And now our journey's coming to an end. Dropping Jenna off at the airport. <laughs> Being bald sucks. Man, I'm dead in there. Who's out of here? And anyway, I'm voting off Dylan off the island. I think I discovered my favorite new beverage. Hmm. I don't know what else to put in this confessional. Editing Dylan, you may have to edit this. She got that tattoo, and had she not gotten the tattoo, I'd be richer because I was a victim. And by victim, I mean a very happy victim. <laughs> but that shouldn't. Okay. <laughs> I'm even more tired than night one, if that is possible. Emma, you little beep. Yeah, I spent the most of Euclid, and I am not proud of that. Crisscross. Okay, so we are going to do our draw for next year's trip. Now, when, who was the, the deciding factor for Nashville? Mike. Was it? Mike started it and then like he was gonna meet up with me and Jared and then it come into like, we just all met in Nashville. Okay. And then when we were in Nashville, we made a list on Emma's phone of places like we wanted to go, we just wrote them down. And then we did a number generator and it ended up being like St. Louis slash Chicago. So we decided on doing St. Louis. 
um, just because there was so much to do and we couldn't do both in one trip like we, we kind of, wanted. We kind of revolved around Billy's store too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that was the that yeah. was the main center point. And then this year, uh, Jenna turned twenty one finally, Woo -woo. and <laughs> I remember on our first trip in Nashville, she said she really wanted to do New Orleans mm -hmm. when she was twenty one. So that was like already yeah. set in stone for year three, and we've done it. So. We've done it. <laughs> year I was like you guys why don't we do one of those drawings where we put like our number one idea in a hat and we draw it out and that's just where we go so that's what we're gonna do <laughs> the fact that we're writing this with crayon <laughs> I know nothing about this place, and that's kind of why I'm putting it down, so. <laughs> I'm scared. I gotta make sure it's jumbled. It always is. It has been. Oh, shit. Wait. Oh, Dylan. A kernel came out. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, Jenna, Jenna. <laughs> she just blessed it like you did last time. Sorry. <laughs> 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 For good luck. <laughs> <laughs> 